The public facilities element provides an overview of facilities that service the community, which include fire, police, schools, community services, water, and waste. The Oceano Community Services District, or OCSD, provides potable water service to approximately 2,200 connections. The district also provides wastewater collection services through a network of pipelines owned by the South San Luis Obispo County Sanitation District, who is responsible for the treatment and disposal. This graph shows the capacity and usage of water in Oceano. Capacity on the left and usage on the right. Currently, Oceano only uses roughly 30% of its total water supply. Likewise, this graph on the right shows the capacity on the left and usage on the right of wastewater for the entire South County area. Currently, the wastewater treatment facility has enough capacity for over 2 million gallons of wastewater per day. This means that Oceano has the potable and wastewater capacity to support new growth. Flooding has been identified by many community members as an important public facilities concern. While multiple factors contribute to flooding issues, proper storm management is vitally important. Numerous areas in Oceano, circled in red, have been identified as lacking proper stormwater management and experienced recurring flooding. While multiple schools serve the families of Oceano, Oceano Elementary is the only school located within the boundaries of the community itself. Over the last three years, the average class size of 24 students has held steady. The strengths brought up at the previous community meeting include the presence of recreation and local parks, the newly established health center, and proximity to emergency services. Community members provided information on the following public facility barriers. Airport issues such as noise and land allocation, flooding, and vehicles and beach safety. The community's wishes include improvements in curves and gutters, a desire to see more sidewalks and crosswalks, as well as increased lighting, family services, and flood control. The most significant future development is the possible implementation of Central Coast Blue a wastewater recycling program scheduled to begin construction in 2020. The program will recycle wastewater and inject the treated water into the aquifer. This program will help maintain the aquifer at sustainable levels and create a barrier to seawater intrusion into the aquifer. Additionally, in an attempt to address potential flooding of Arroyo Grande Creek, a water management plan for the area has been completed. This plan promotes environmental habitat preservation while enhancing overall capacity during storms. Safety. The safety element examines issues related to seismic related hazards, fire hazards, and flood slash tsunami related hazards. Seismic and geological hazards include ground shaking, liquefaction, and subsidence. Ground shaking is the primary cause of earthquake damage to human-made structures. Ground shaking is not likely to be considered a major concern due to the distance of most active faults from Oceano. However, liquefaction, which is the tendency of soils to lose strength when shaken, is considered a larger concern. Subsidence, subsidence occurs when land surfaces sink Due to excessive groundwater removal, subsidence is possible as water tables fall. However, it is unlikely given the health of the groundwater basin. Only a small part of the community is located in a fire hazard zone. However, adjacent fire hazard zones are potentially, can potentially affect structures, particularly housing in Oceano. 
Recent droughts have the potential to increase the severity and the possibility of these fire hazards. The coastal and southern portions of Oceano, highlighted in red, are the areas with very high risk of flooding. Sea level rise can significantly worsen this issue, and as this map shows on the right, Oceano is located in a high sea level rise vulnerability area. Oceano's strengths, barriers, and wishes were identified in the previous community meeting. The strengths include proximity to fire and emergency services, the community voice that the only major safety barrier is flooding, and because it is so important, many residents also wish to see improvement in flood control. With these strengths, barriers, and wishes in mind, a crucial emerging direction for Oceano is the integration of the goals identified in the local hazard mitigation plan into efforts to control flooding and other hazards in the community. Health. The health element is an optional element. It is being incorporated into the Oceano community plan process to identify measures of physical and mental wellness in the community. Addressed in the health element are topics such as proximity to medical services, access to healthy foods, availability of recreation, quality of life, and air quality. This element is closely tied with land use, circulation, and safety. We reviewed the following four categories to assess health in Oceano today. Access to services, respiratory health, access to wholesome food, and access to park and recreation facilities. The newly established community health center is the only health service located within the community. In the community, there are three small markets, and only one accepts food assistance programs. There are also farm stands which help promote healthy food access. Oceano Memorial Park is, the, is Oceano's only community park, and while it has playground, picnic spots, and a basketball court, it is not big enough for other recreational sports like soccer which are typically played on the elementary school field. The community <laughs> center offers indoor basketball, but often at prices not affordable to many in Oceano. The following strengths related to health were identified at our first public meeting. Excitement about the new community health center, enjoyment for the weather as it is an inviting climate for recreation, and an appreciation for the diversity of food they can access in Oceano. Community member responses to the question about barriers to health in Oceano included the lack of environmental protection with regards to the dunes and the dust that blows in the air and limited flood control. Concern about limited access to parks and recreation opportunities, where through analysis, we found that only 11.1% of the community lives within half a mile of the park. And the limited bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure in Oceano. When community members were asked what they wished for in Oceano, the key requests were to see more active transportation infrastructure, specifically sidewalks, an increase in healthy food options, and more recreational spaces, particularly for youth. With these strengths, barriers, and wishes in mind, we identified a few key directions for Oceano. To increase opportunities to connect with medical and health resources and facilities, especially for mental health, more infrastructure to help residents safely commute on foot or by bike, better access to healthy foods, which could mean more options for places to grocery shop in Oceano, and more recreational spaces, which could mean indoor soccer fields or an outdoor multi-use trail. Environmental justice. The guiding principle of environmental justice is that everyone, regardless of race, color, national origin, or income is entitled to equal protection from environmental harms and risks. More simply stated, environmental justice strives to prioritize programs to address specific community needs, reduce unique and compound health risks such as pollution exposure, food access, safe and sanitary homes, and physical activity. 
as well as promote civic engagement. Environmental justice is a required element if a community meets at least one of the following qualifications. The median household income is less than 80% of the statewide median income. The area is identified as among the most disadvantaged 25% in the state according to Cal EPA, or at least 75% of the public school students in the area are eligible to receive free or reduced price meals. Oceano meets the first and third qualification, therefore is designated as an environmental justice community. Oceano has a median income of just over $52,000 compared to the state at over $67,000. This positions Oceano at 77% of the statewide median income based on the most current census data, meeting qualifications of being less than 80% of the state. At Oceano Elementary School, 82% of the students are enrolled in the free and reduced price meal program. Highest concentration of noise. <laughs> yes. That's a fire truck. <laughs> Meeting the threshold of Oceana to be identified as an environmental justice community. In the greater school district, about 50% of all students are eligible for the same program. Since environmental justice strives to include low income or minority people in public engagement processes, it's important that in addition to understanding income, we should be mindful of the racial composition of the community. Most current estimates published by the US Census identify that about a quarter of Oceano is a racial minority or non-white. By comparison, San Luis Obispo County has about a tenth of non-white residents. Furthermore, about two thirds of the community in Oceano identify as of Hispanic origin compared to a fifth of the county. Understanding the community is one aspect of environmental justice. Another piece is knowing the sensitive receptors to issues of pollution. The displayed map points out major sources of pollution in Oceano, which include the dunes, state vehicular recreation area, the Oceano Airport, the South San Luis Obispo County Sanitation District, and Highway 1. Also indicated on this map are sensitive receptors to noise, water, and air pollution such as Oceano Elementary School and the Senior Center. Each of these major sources of pollution and sensitive receptors span less than one and a quarter mile from each other. Addressing these impacts will be a crucial role of the environmental justice element. Currently, there are a number of planning projects related to environmental justice in Oceano. Public facility improvements include the Arroyo Grande Creek Waterway Management Plan that we discuss under the public facilities element, the Oceano Dunes to State Vehicular Recreation Area, and the San Luis Obispo County Air Pollution Control District have reached a settlement that requires the Oceano Dunes <coughs> SVRA um, to reduce dust emissions, dust emissions by 50% over the next five years to improve air quality. Also, the California Coastal Commission has recognized Oceano as an environmental justice community and is in the process of getting their draft environmental justice policy approved. At our first community meeting, the following strengths related to environmental justice were identified. The rich, multicultural, diverse community and a strong sense of community pride. Community members identified weaknesses related to environmental justice, which were air pollution from the dunes, airport and vehicular traffic, poor connectivity, such as the lack of sidewalks and bike trails, poor land use distribution with uses such as the airport and wastewater treatment plant being so close in proximity to housing and schools, and flooding issues in the community. Community members identified the following barriers. Limited sidewalks, crosswalks, and parking, off-highway vehicle use on the dunes, and financial constraints or funding to address environmental justice. Related community wishes that were expressed during the first meeting included increased pedestrian connectivity and safety, limitations to airport expansion and development, 
and improved infrastructure to mitigate environmental impacts. With these strengths, barriers, wishes in mind, we identified a few key directions for Oceano. First, to increase availability of active transportation infrastructure so more community members can travel by walking, biking, or transit. To continue to actively work with the San Luis Obispo Air Pollution Control District to control air pollution from the dunes and other sources of pollutants and to ensure that residents affected by environmental decision-making have a fair opportunity to participate in the decision-making process on projects that have the potential to impact their health through the coordination of meetings at convenient times and locations. Thanks again for listening to our presentations. We are now going to start our final breakout session. Our student team has rotated the boards once again with questions representing the elements we just presented. As a reminder, each board has between two to four questions. For each question, you will again have a set number of stickers to receive. If you have any questions, you know who to ask, and we're going to reconvene in 15 minutes.